Hello and good evening everyone, or good afternoon, or good morning, or whatever time it is for you right now. Um, yeah. Back to streaming. Um, with hopefully a slightly improved setup. We shall see. Um, yeah, I fiddled a tiny bit with the setup from last time, but I think it's now mostly stabilized, so we shall see. Um, good, yeah, uh, the game is, as uh, is a uh, habit, The Outer Worlds. We're continuing that. Um, I mentioned before that The Outer Worlds was made by some people involved in Fallout, but what I probably didn't mention is that who, you know, those are individuals, and uh, the company um, is uh, Obsidian that released this game. And you might also know Obsidian from. Uh, certain uh, sequels um, like um, Knights of the Old Republic 2. So um, you could, uh, at least at, in the beginning of their career, Obsidian were kind of a, you know, dime store uh, knockoff of Bioware if you want to be a little mean to them, which, you know, they were really good. You know, like if, if you're imitating Bioware reasonably well, that's still better than most of the game development studios out there. So, hey, good for them. And uh, anyway, yeah, so that's uh, the company behind the Outer Worlds, so it's not surprising that this game, um, yeah, has a certain place in my heart now. Um, let's hope uh, the ending will hold up uh, to everything. Um, I uh, hope from it, <laughs> or at least you know to to like the the things I expect and require from it. Uh, let me just fiddle with because I think I'm talking a little louder than I did during the sound check. So let's knock down the level slightly. Um. But that should be okay now. Oh, right. And this is also from my test. Good start, professional streamer here. No, I mean, I'm a hobby streamer anyway, but uh, um, I just went out the door and back. Okay, so this is where we left off left last time. Good. Um... So yeah, what did we want to do? Um, we have a box here in which we can put stuff if we want. So if we have any items that we think we want to keep but don't want to carry around, that's nice. We have our bunk, which of course you can't really... Well, you could sleep on it, actually. Um, which in the higher difficulties you have to. What are you paying me for? Oh, wait, uh, you aren't. Yeah, continue. Exactly. Um, okay, so we have a computer here. We picked up this uh, holographic... Sorry, this holographic shroud. So we'll be able to use that. It, uh, As far as I remember, the holographic shroud didn't look in any way dramatic. You know, it was just like you could say, okay, now use this shroud to look inconspicuous and that's it. Use terminal. Welcome Captain. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Viewing messages. Uh, please select Hawthorne's unread messages from Bedford. Udom Wingman's Wingman Bedford to Alex Wingman Hawthorne. 
Oh, I forgot to mention in my previous message. Silly me. I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of, well, steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't you go showing it around to your spacer buddies. I hope it will amuse you while you're out adventuring. Any similarities to a certain someone are entirely intentional. Smiley. Okay. Um, archived messages from Bedford. This Bedford seems to be writing a lot. Um, thank you. Dearest Alex, I can't tell you how pleased I am to finally hear from you. Your message was hilarious. I'm delighted by your sense of humor and the tale of your hijinks. I hope your terminal will cooperate for the foreseeable future. By the way, I was scraping Groundbreaker's comms less network for tasty little tidbits, and I noticed you declined to dock at Edgewater's landing pad and instead touched down in the wilderness. You rugged individualist, you. I only pray that idiot Thompson wasn't giving you any trouble. Anyway, I hope your meeting down on Terra 2 proves fruitful, and I look forward to corresponding, corresponding with greater regularity. Your best friend, Udon. Alex, I don't know where you were raised, but I'd hazard to guess it may have been a barn, because anyone with even a modicum of decent bearing would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore the ardent, sincere messages of one's friend. P.S. Please respond. Um, dear Alex, so I guess we're going through these backwards. I don't know. Uh, because, like, landing on Terra 2, of course, was the last thing. Uh, Alex did. Hello, hello. Hope this finds you well. It was a pleasure to see you in my office again last week. Once again, I'm terribly sorry about the impounding mix-up. How could it have happened a second time? Terminals these days, I swear. Dreadfully unreliable. Aha! Just like your ship. I hope you've given some thought to that thing we discussed. You know, about the Wells fellow? I'm so sorry to press, but I have the strangest tickling feeling that you really do know him. And if you could just tell me where he is, well, it would be marvelous for our friendship, wouldn't it? Looking forward to seeing you again, wingman. Uh, hello, Udom here, Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally impounded your ship. My silly fat finger is embarrassing me once again. I hope that wasn't too terribly inconvenient for you. It was such a pleasure for me, and I tremendously appreciate your forbearance in not throttling me. You really are quite the gentleman. If you're ever in Groundbreaker's airspace, well, space space, please don't hesitate to look me up. The Lost Hope serves Spectrum Vodka. Perhaps we could try every color? You know, really tie one on. Your new friend, Udom. Okay, so, uh... That wasn't too... Uh, so apparently there's someone who is at executive level. What is Udom? A groupie or a spy? Yeah, from from like the the first messages which we read last, um, it kind of seems to me like he's more... You know, like he's probably some, you know, like higher up on that space station. And... Um, is um, trying to get uh, Hawthorne, or was trying to get Hawthorne to uh, squeal on uh, Wells, the scientist, um, so they could finally capture him. Um, and I guess he's, you know, like, he, like, every time Hawthorne landed or came near uh, Groundbreaker, I guess, he impounded the ship. So, uh, I guess to get to talk to Hawthorne. Um, so that sounds more, you know, more spy or, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, legal harassment. Pretending, oh, it was just a misunderstanding, but really it was uh, um, them just making sure they get time with Hawthorne. So I guess that means on Groundbreaker they might there might be people who know Hawthorne. So I guess I better not say I'm Alex Hawthorne there. Log entry one shrink ray. 
Captain's note, shrink rate. Note to self, remember this later. No better, Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would you even ask me that? Okay. Back to my point. I saw, in actuality, with my own two eyes, a sublimely powerful weapon in Wells's lap. Just sitting there for the taking. If the gray hair were to look away or forget about it, maybe. Or if I had asked a smidgen more nicely. He called it a shrink ray, but wouldn't let me test that claim after I lost my temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who've dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Push the boundaries of decency laws. I mean, there are probably some decency laws in uh, Hyperion that we don't really that we wouldn't really agree with, you know, because they're like, be decent to the company or something like that. But on the other hand, that might mean Wells has some unethical experiments planned. I had heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science's cutting edge. But I figured they were just stories, to be honest. Laying eyes on Wells' shrink ray first hand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumors. Log entry 2, titled Hammer Power. The last time I got sloshed, I mean, was imbibing at the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. Look, Udom was really free with the drinks, he seems like an okay fellow. I shamelessly but subtly eavesdropped onto Margit's yammering about a mad scientist come some years back who'd claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Like none of us have heard that one before. But here's the good part. The martyrs said the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat? Sure fits the bill. It could be another one of the weapons that inspired Wells. Black market leads. Why? Why? Why won't Wells just give the shrink ray to me? Blast him to the depths of the tar labyrinth on Tartarus and back. Let the record show I did apologize for shouting him down. Five times. But architect be damned. It's just sitting there, neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or uh, breaking expensive equipment when he said it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were, he wouldn't entrust it to someone like me. What does that even mean, I ask, that I'm not trustworthy enough? That I'd use it to wipe out the good, hard-working folks of the colony like some sort of moral-less psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code of me, myself, and mine. What's not to respect in that? Exactly. Now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meantime, I have been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to others of these science weapons through Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next step will be to check with the black market merchants on the Groundbreaker and in Fallbrook. Acquire Phineas Science, or acquires the science weapon on Groundbreaker. Okay. Speak to Gladys on the Groundbreaker. Still our objective, but we got an extra mission from this. Nice. Okay. So I guess we've looked at everything in here. Oh, what's this? Sam. There's no response from the auto-mechanical unit. A serial number etched in his chassis includes the letters S-A-M. Leave the auto-mechanical alone. Armor parts and an energy cell. Anything else? No. Hmm. Why can't we do anything with the robots? I want a robot friend. There are examine stern older man with warm eyes. Photo of Parvati's father. Okay, so that's the guy that died of a heart attack. Banged up toolbox, full of modified tools with unique mechanical usages. Digging around in here would be an easy way to lose a finger or to a sawtoothed blade. OK. 
Okay, what's this? The Modern Steel Wrench and You. This book is heavily dog-eared with doodles in the mar margins. <laughs> this is not a petunia. Petunia the plant. Okay, I guess she took some of her plants along from her apartment. That's nice. This is, I guess, an empty room. And I guess... Oh, this is Max's place. Doctrinal Studies 539 of Equity and Equations. These textbooks have been out of print for almost half a century. The margins are filled with scribbled notes and many passages have been underlined. Some pages have come loose, the glue now yellowed and cracked along the spines. Empty room equals for more companions. Yes, I hope so. The ship is bigger on the inside than on the outside. <laughs> well, aren't all spaceships? So I'm in the Journal of Maximilian de Soto, Volume 1. The scribblings on these journal pages are utterly illegible to anyone except Vicar Maximilian de Soto. Index of Banned Literature. Part 1. Various Qualifying Considerations. 2. Principal Rules of Restrictive Management. 3. Morals and Maxims of Banning Unethical Literature. 4. Proof of the Grand Architect and Predestination, a refudiation of the titles listed here within. 5. Consequences, the mind and the will of man when led astray. 6. Official list of banned titles. 7. Prerequisites for advancing the investigation, outing and penalizing of, of, of offenders. <clears throat> Tossball trading cards. In mint condition, most of these cards represent players from the Hephaestus Hammers and the Tilebackers. So I guess if we see something... I think we saw Tossball cards, like, in some people's inventory, but I think I didn't take them. So I guess if we find some, maybe we can bring them to him. Ar the Art and Science of Tossball. Impossible to put down. Order of Scientific Inquiry. Office of Literature. This endorsement has been approved. Auntie Cleo's Darlings. Signed by Seymour Whitlock, who held the record for most on-the-field fatalities for three consecutive seasons. Um, fatalities are a record that is tracked. Okay. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Um... Uh, let's talk about this uh, personal quest of yours. Of course. Are you ready to break into security on the Crownbreaker? Remind me why we want to do that. If I can access the data cartridge from the terminal in security, I can easily hack into their arrivals and departures registry. That'll give us dates, times, and the crew manifests for every registered ship. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. All right. Um... So I guess we'll take him along to the Groundbreaker. Let you know, Kevin, we have two companions. Um, and um, only two. And it can take a long two, I think, as far as I remember. That is not really much of a choice right now. Examine. What doesn't kill you gives you tetanus. Good point. Hmm, 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 hmm. What's this? 
this. Oh, that's the bathroom. Nothing in there, though. Nothing in there, though. And that's the engine room. Oh, Parvati is working here. Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely, flying about on his own? That's not really what I want to say. Hmm. Yeah. And I think it's time you move along probably means like dismiss the companion. I don't think we want to do that. Hmm. Okay, I guess we can't talk to her about Hawthorne. That's a bit, you know, like on one hand, it's cool that she tells us her thoughts, but they should have given us at least one answer, which in this case, you know, doesn't seem like it would, you know, have much of an effect, you know. They could just have had a separate entry, since, you know, it doesn't have to be voiced because our player character isn't voiced. There's really no technical reason. Or, well, maybe there is a technical reason just because every single thing you add kind of can have bugs. Um, but you know what I mean. Like, it's not, it's not one of the difficult problems where it's like, yeah, but they'd have to do additional dialogue recording. Oh, we can use the workbench to modify stuff. Oh, but I think we already have... We can install three magazine mods. Let's see. Magazine changes the weapon's damage type to plasma, damage type to shock. Oversized magazine. So let's go with that one. Install mod, yes. Alright. What did the three mean? Like because I can only put in one apparently. Barrel one magazine two. Hmm. Grenade launcher. Extra power. I guess we can put that in there. Damage type plasma. That sounds cool. What's this? Um Barrels, fun times barrel, critical damage plus 25% is the only thing we have, so I guess we'll just put it in there. And here, magazine, mag to power, and mag to zap. Um, I think it's just a grenade launcher, so... We already have a bunch of plasma, so I guess we'll use the mag to zap here. Look at the ship layout. If that's not a Serenity clone, I don't know what is. <laughs> is Plasma not the one that burns the loot to be unfindable? Yeah, kind of. But it's also, you know, very efficient. Alright. I guess we've modded some of our weapons and hopefully that will help us. So, does Ada have anything to say? Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Know anything about the auto-mechanical gathering dust in the janitor's closet? Ah, good that I did. The unit is a cleaning sand. 
Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. I'm in the mood for some entertainment. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Ada, tell me a joke. Two atoms were strolling through Roseway when one of them exclaimed, I think I lost an electron. Really? The other asked. Are you sure? Yes, I'm absolutely positive. But the, oh, wait. Um. All right. Um. Ada, play my favorite song. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's Choice. That's not my favorite song. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board certified jingle their favorite song. Okay. As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. Got a minute to talk? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. What if you don't have a power source? I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber. Perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on a lost hope? I think I'm... It seems slightly rude, but... Uh, you know, let's try that, because maybe we can find out more about Ada. Don't try to change the subject. As the organics say, I wouldn't dream of it. Because I can't. Dream, you know. What do you think about the trapped colonists on the Hope? When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. And what might that be? Traveling the system with you, Captain. What about your last Captain? Do you miss him, or is one captain the same as another? Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel that. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the lovely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. Have there been other captains on this ship? If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. Let's talk about something else. How can I be of assistance? I'd like to learn more about the colony. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Okay, let's start with Terra 2. That's where we just came from. Where in Terra 2? Emerald Vale and Edgewater, I guess. Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like, say, a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. <laughs> She's a bit angry. What do you think of the townspeople? 
You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. Ooh. How is Edgewater faring since we left it? Since you diverted power to the deserters, the botanical lab is thriving. However, Emerald Vale's cannery shut down, leading to a total collapse of Edgewater's population. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> I want to talk about somewhere else. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? So the Groundbreaker is where we will be going. We are clear to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardets take their docking laws quite seriously. Um, you can take care of that for us, right? I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. Great. Thanks. <laughs> you are more than welcome, Captain. <laughs> Just ignore the sarcasm. Well, give me the spiel on the Groundbreaker. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. I have filed the required docking forms in triplicate, and fees have been paid. Yay. I want to ask about somewhere else. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Phineas Orbital Lab, because I guess after the Groundbreaker, that's probably where we're going next. Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. His more so than most. Why is that? The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas B. Wells has taken a measure of precaution to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing your location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. Hmm. What do you know about Phineas? There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon system? <laughs> what? No, do not do that. A sensible choice, as we do not have any laser. <laughs> Want to ask about somewhere else? Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Okay, monarch. I think that's like something that some people mentioned as being especially nice, like going there eventually or something. Monarch. Oh, I guess Stellar Bay. Ah, Monarch, the armpit of the Halcyon system. Her last functioning port town is Stellar Bay. Well, that is if you don't count Sublight Smuggler's Port at Fallbrook. Oh, no, Monarch is the one with the monsters, right? Smuggler's Port? It's Sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband, and before you ask, I don't know the coordinates, so I can't dock us there. Why is Monarch being blockaded? I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness, and a lawless land with no corporate presence. You may wish to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. Alright. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Where in Monarch? Cascadia. Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. Indefinite detention or death. 
Any people live in Cascadia aside from Marauders? There are no people aside from Marauders in Cascadia. There is only death. What's the local report? The local report is that you will very likely die if you leave Cascadia's landing pad. Sounds dangerous. This is one of those times where you say one word but really mean another, isn't it? I suppose you would find an environment like this fun. All right. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to do? We're in Monarch. Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. Oh, okay, that's only those questions. I can't get the others back. She looks really frightened. Let's talk about something else. How can I be of assistance? Talk to you later. I'll be here. Alright, so I guess let's... Oops, wrong button. Let's go upstairs again. And see if our computer has anything to say about Sam. Search term, Sam. First Sam result. Experimental note, uh, do not forget, you, fo you found a discarded sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical in Emerald Vale scrap heap during your last job. It should not be too difficult to get it up and running. With a few key modifications, I can envision a combat capable variant. Some might say a clean, mean killing machine. Should be fun. Removal of factory standard part Suds Steeper was successful. Delivery of combat modified replacement part Acid Steeper has been delayed. Progress setback is as estimated now to be a solid three months. Not like I have more pressing matters to attend to. Ah, uh, but I do. I'm giving up hope on the delivery. The part is lost in transit and it's not turning up anytime soon. But good news. I heard from a fellow who knows a gal who knows the broker who overcharged me for the information regarding the location of an acid steeper I can uh, filch. The part was sent to an old storage facility in Roseway. I sure never thought I'd go back to that pit. Good thing Auntie abandoned it years ago. I'll pick it up following this next pit stop back to Emerald Vale. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come later. Alright. So I guess uh, we now know where to find a part to add to the robot. Okay, still nothing we can do with him, though. Can we talk about him with Parvati? I mean, I would guess an auto-mechanical would be in her wheelhouse. Sometimes I can hear Vickers saying prayers to himself. Sometimes I hear him cussing about toss ball scores. <laughs> Okay, I guess nothing. So that means I guess we're good and we can now go to the Groundbreaker. Are you ready to go to a new planet? Groundbreaker docking base. Space's Choice Travel Advisory. Welcome to the system map. Here you can see all of the planets in the system as well as some special points of interest that you may have discovered. You can fly your ship to any location that you have unlocked, though some landing bays require special codes and keys before they allow you to land there. Moving between planets is considered extremely dangerous and all employees are encouraged to remain home or at work. Mission reached. The Groundbreaker. Ooh. Nice. Hmm. Is there any 
you think? Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Oh. She knows how to talk to people. Oh. Sure. Hey, Captain. I heard the Groundbreakers got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? What about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borsten beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Sure, we could have head over to engineering now. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Mm. I guess I don't get to. Something busted, Captain? Hmm. Okay, then I guess... Take someone to watch your back, please. <laughs> That's a good way of, uh, you know, giving you kind of game mechanics information through in-game means. Transition to Groundbreaker docking base. Okay. So, let's take a long Parvati and Max, I guess. Continue. All right. Yep, there you are. Okay. Who's that? Just checking your ship's manifest. Standard procedure. Welcome to Groundbreaker, by the by. Don't mind the heat. Got a few days before it reaches critical. I'm sure Miss Chief Tennyson will get it sorted before then. Don't mind the heat. Um. Hey, Captain. Hop in space. I never thought I'd be able to say that. Are we gonna get in trouble today? Not that I want to. Just seems to happen around you, is all. We'll talk later, I guess. I can't say we yeah, we're in space. So that's not the point. This hack would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get cute with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. You a drink. Hmm. He looks like he's trouble. Going for a stroll around the docking base? I noticed you were in the middle of an argument earlier. Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. I'd like to hear your side. What happened? I had this foreman, right? Guy never liked me. Always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. And that's when you resolve your differences like an adult. <laughs> so you defend the... Oh, boy. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Got any plans? Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? 
Technically, the previous captain died in a horrible accident. So your ship's got a dark and violent history? This is just too perfect. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off. Guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. I never caught your name. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, Felix. See you around, boss. I was kind of thinking we could probably recruit him or something. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Nope. I guess that was it. Yeah, I've done work for Sublight. Need to pay the bill somehow. Hmm. Oh, that's all stealing. With all those cops around, I don't think I should do that right now. Can I talk to you? Oh, you're just some cop. Move along. Steve Dor. It's always fucking freezing in the bays. Um, it just said. Don't mind the heat, and you say it's fucking freezing. <laughs> I think someone on the team doing the dialogue didn't, uh, the, the, what would you call it, incidental dialogue, didn't talk to the story people. Huh. Customs and inspection, right this way. Not sure I want to go through customs. Examine. For various crimes and violations of board policy, including any and all of the following. Sedition, forgery, conspiracy, conspiracy to commit conspiracy, unlicensed medical practice, destruction of board property. Wanted Phineas V. Wells. I wonder what that fella did to get the board so wild at him. Mechanicals all over, but they still got us sweating to move boxes. All right. Restricted access. Okay, so we can't go in there, I guess. Stay in the public areas and we'll get along fine. Okay. Maybe there's something up here. Hmm. Do do do. Oh, there's a hole up here. That looks good. Oops. Ouch. Yeah, that wasn't too smart. Space has joints found a flaw in you. Flaw tutorial. During your adventures, things may happen to your character that can trigger a flaw offer. Taking the flaw is optional, but doing so provides you with a perk. The choice is yours. It's just acrophobia. After repeatedly falling from great heights, you no longer function well when the ground is far beneath you. Effects phobic. Dexterity minus one, perception minus one, temperament minus one. But I get one perk point. Mm, not really interested. Uh, okay, let's try that again, I guess. And maybe this time don't fall down. Hmm. Ah. It's not getting better. Ah. Careful, you're hurt. Whoops. Steve Dormin's dock worker. Okay. So I guess there is a hole up there, but I can't get up to it. So what else can we do? You learn to keep your eyes to yourself in my job. Nobody wants you looking close at their cargo. Okay. Hmm. Card 
cartridge, light ammo. Armor parts. Do you mind? I'm trying to file a report. Okay, okay, sorry. Ammo, bypass shunt, energy cells. Doji Slims, I think that was cigarettes. Hmm. Like, I remember it told us that, you know, I'm thinking maybe we can... It says restricted area. When we got our holographic disguise uh, at the end of last stream, it told us that we need, you know, ID information from someone. Like an ID card or something. So... Wait, what's this? <gasps> A Mardet ID cartridge. That looks good. Understood. I'll keep my head down. You found an ID cartridge to use with the holographic shroud. You will now be automatically disguised when entering the associated restricted area. Ooh, okay. I wonder... Let's just try it out because I'm interested. What would happen? So let's save the game here. Be a little safe scummy. And find out what happens if we try to go through here right now. Identification, please. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I don't have an ID. What happens then? Everybody's got an ID. Oh, let me guess. You uh, left it in your other pants? <laughs> I hear that one a lot. And because if I present Hawthorne's ID, then of course that other guy will probably... the the um. What's his name? Umbor? Will probably have me locked up or something. It's my first time here. You've got a ship, but you've never visited Groundbreaker. You must have just dusted off from one of those dirt side outposts. Sure did. And now we're in space! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Groundbreaker. I'm sorry to tell you this, but... I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. How do I get this resolved? You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Any idea why my ship was impounded? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. Uh, great. I'll go talk to him and straighten this out. You take the starch out of him? Well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Sure. Wanda Dorset over in sickbay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Her shipment? A handful of sand cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Got it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? 
I'm looking for someone named Gladys. The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Hmm. Okay. I'm looking for a drink. Any recommendations? Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera. She'll set you up. Got it. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. Can I find a job around here? Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board. That is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Okay. So I guess this is actually not so bad a choice. How does Halcyon Holdings work anyway? Are you pulling my leg? I just want to hear your take on it. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the Board. So there's actually a boardroom somewhere with all these company heads in it? Sitting around drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. The board runs most of the system, don't they? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. How does Groundbreaker fit into that? Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Got it. Glad to help. Didn't think there were many independent operators in the system. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. But there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. I'm looking for something a little more local. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk. <laughs> Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. How about something long term? If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. What do you know about sublight salvage? They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. That's all I needed to know about work. All right. What can you tell me about Udom Bedford? He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. So there's tension between the Groundbreaker and the board. They can't abide an independent township, especially not one they gotta depend on. We're the first and last stop out of this colony. All their interstellar freighters come through us. And we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, 
I want I want to to find out all these conversations. And the way I know this game, they'll only let me get one. Why can't Groundbreaker and the board just work together? Ah, uh, I'll go for this one. I'm glad it terrifies them. The bastards keep pushing them. It's a delicate balance, right? We could cancel our freighter's docking privileges in retaliation, but where'd that lead us? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Thanks for the info. Sure thing. See you around. Be seeing you. Okay, so I guess we get to go in there. Then I guess we don't get to try out the shroud. Works as well. This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew ch I mean, the scholar shipped in and out with. Wasteland, you're hearing things. <laughs> no, seriously. There was a lot of static at first, but then this voice said his name was Graham? Graham, right. Broadcasting on a dead world full of monsters. Now I've heard everything. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Who told you that? Graham? <laughs> that was an interesting conversation. I guess that was about Monarch? By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Remind me, what are your thoughts on the philosophists? I guess we didn't do that. Uh, but it's remind me, so we have already done this. Um, so, let's see. What mission does he want? Coil the science weapon on Groundbreaker? Okay, some doctor we can do work for. Constable Reyes of Edgewater, that's the one I didn't want to do, but I guess we could still do that. Interesting. Drinking sapphire wine. The cleaning machine. From Roseway, but we haven't been to Roseway yet, wherever that is. The Empty Man. Okay, that's the mission Max wants us to do. So let's see if there's... Ah, we need to get into the security office. So that's why we need the secret thing. Let's talk to those people first. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty posting, I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time, nor loitering. What bounties do you have available? Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed. Just 26 hours old. Uh, the posting, that is. <laughs> uh, allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, Failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. Flying under the influence of illegal substances? Swerving in the air was more like it. Then he crashed hard into the dock and tumbled out of his ship and fled on foot. Spilled Rizzo's Violet Spectrum vodka all over Officer Hartley. An affront of its own, considering none of us are approved for anything higher than Green Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> he spilled the good booze on them. <laughs> uh, 
Any leads on where I might find Macared? Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the leg work. Why don't you send a Marta to apprehend him? Apprehend him. Oh, I will. As soon as the chief approves the personnel reorg required for a bounty dispatch. So, in about three to seven weeks. I'll take the posting. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head, or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck and skip speed to you. I couldn't help but notice the bounty posting on Phineas Wells. Let's ask that. The outlaw scientist fella, right. The board's had it out for him for ages. If you have an inkling of the where's or what for's of his location, Udon Bedford would surely like to hear it. Is this Wells fellow a famous criminal or something? To the board, yeah. You've read his wanted poster. Whole list of things to get their unders in a wad. But he's never done nothing to Groundbreaker, so I've no problem with him. We keep the poster up to keep the peace is all. <laughs> okay. So, so, I like this station. So what's it like working security detail on a space station? Do I look like your gossipy best friend? While I'm on post, I take my duties real serious. I would have no qualms whatsoever escorting you to a cell. Understand? Fine, fine. Then get to business or get moving. What's a Mardit? We're the security force here on Groundbreaker. Started back before the crossing, you know. Why Mardet and not guard or officer? The original force was made up of a marine detachment from the 77th Marine Expeditionary Unit, Trailward Fleet. Folks started calling us Mardets because it was easier to say. Yes, it's. Ah, tough. marine detachment. I'll be on my way. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Just getting my bearings. What do you do here? This is the security desk, ma'am. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sunita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> That's always the best way to <laughs> to put a little fun in answers like that and, you know, save yourself having to do the same conversation twice for two officers. They could just say, well... This one isn't allowed to do that. Go to the other one, and that way they only need one conversation voice recorded. Do you do, I don't know, tours or something? Oh, wait. Let's let's follow up on why can't you take incident reports? I'm not so good at filing. Mix up first name and surname one, two, seven times. Well, folks are liable to start taking your filing privileges away. Okay, do you do tours or something? We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not... We just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. So I can try to persuade him... Or I can try to bribe him. I'll try it. I want to persuade someone. Let's see if that works. Do me a favor and I'll owe you one. All right, I, I guess. In and out, though. Just try not to do any shady stuff. I'd like to keep my job. Can I now walk in here? Okay. Let's just walk slowly. As far as I remember, we're not supposed to run. Oops, where is this? Oh. 
just yank the drive and I'll do the rest. Use terminal. Eject docking records data cartridge. Okay, confiscated goods. Detained a freelancer who was cagey about his business, confiscated his personal belongings while he waited for questioning. Modified pistol, hatchet, metal hoop, prayer beads, OSI, locked container, owner refused inspection. He fled before we could get down to it, left his things behind, so they're stored in the back of the security station until the idiot shows his face again, which is likely to be never. Security locks. Sublight put a bid on one of our impounds. Generous one, too. Negotiate for the usual finder's fee and then give Lilia her salvage. Brawl at the Lost Hope. Freelancers versus board. Freelancers won. Arrested a freighter captain with more bits than brains. Hawthorne's ship impounded by order of Udon Bedford. Still no clue why Hawthorne associates with that board snake. A guy from the back base roughed up on roughed up the moon kid. Raving mad warned me that the moon was gonna bring about the end times. He was flying high on whatever MacRed grows down there. Got a sworn testimony that MacRed was spotted at the rest and go. Not that anyone will corroborate it. Reminder to keep an eye on Gladys. Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. Okay. So, can we talk to you? Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Ah, uh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bit card he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? He said ch before. You hesitate there, Vicar. What aren't you telling me? Oh, it's nothing. I suppose I really didn't have much faith in actually finding them. Was a bit of a long shot, wasn't it? This all seems awfully convenient. I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. Oh, let's go. Well, at least we got skill and perk points. So let's see. Um, inhaler. No. I guess we'll do more text, stealth, dialogue. Okay, and now we've hit 50 on some of those. So I guess we'll invest, and I think we've invested some in ranged. So let's put two more into ranged, and one more into tech. So now we can, if we now invest more into stealth later, then we have to, um, we only get sneak and lockpick higher. But heck, we have to manually increase beyond, increase beyond 50. Oh, we have one more point available. I um, guess we could invest it into stealth. I mean, heck won't go up but at least sneak and lock pick, or we could put it into tech. Uh, let's put it into tech as well. Uh, 
Okay, apply. Okay, perks. We have one perk point available. Toughness. Negotiator. Vendor price is lower. XP from companion kills. Tactical time dilation meter max. Oh, yeah. Damage when alone in a party. Tactical time dilation recharge rate. That's our walk or sprint speed. Weapons armor durability loss. Additional ammo stock. Base armor rating or companion crit chance. I mean, with more companion crit chance, that means that a critical hit is more likely when the companions attack someone. So that means I won't have to shoot as much. I think I'll go with that. I think my running speed is not really that bad right now. All right. Oh, and Max has points. Increase your hack skill when Max is in the, Max is in the party. Less threat generate. Decrease the amount of threat this companion generates, making them less likely to attack this companion. No, I want them to attack my companions because that means I stay alive and don't die. I could make him my tank, I guess. Base health. Um, but I guess these are the unique skills of this character, I guess. So, I mean, better hack skills when I have him with me kind of sounds good. I guess I'll go with that. All right. Reginald Cheney. Um, Fall broke on Monarch. Okay. So that's something we don't want to finish right now because it's not on the station. And nav key on Monarch we'd need anyway. So that's what we'll do, continue with the main mission for now. Hmm. Oh, this is not stealing. And this one is barred, I guess, locked from behind. And this one. Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. The board would like to remind spacers and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted for your protection. Canyons of acid and sulfur rain are the least of the horrors plaguing the surface of Monarch. Anarchists live as one with the animal, lawless, savage, and unemployed. The board's embargo ensures that nothing can leave the planet and threaten our hard-working citizens. You've been listening to Halcyon News, your mandated duty as a good citizen of Halcyon. All right. So we know the official story. Hmm. Not sure we should be hanging out in the crew quarters. Okay, and that's the exit. Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Rizzo, stretch your vodka. Aftertaste the rainbow. Hmm. Okay. Yes, glad it's rest and go. That's where they said to go.
the lost hope. I guess I think that was the bar. The spaces choice shop. What the heck? Jesus. Well, sorry about the heat. Well, Chief Tennyson will get the radiators fixed soon. Of course, this heat sure makes a zero G brew extra refreshing. It's an ale that's good for what ails you. Oh, and it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. A lot of slogans to keep track of. Sometimes I forget. You work for Spacer's Choice. Ever been to Edgewater? Heard of it. My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery, which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. Well, uh, don't go looking into it. If you did, that'd be good, actually. They could use the help. And if you do, please don't mention us. <laughs> I'd have to go over my contract, but I don't think I'm allowed to leave Groundbreaker. Or this stall. So, what can I get you? Some soap? Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. <laughs> I've got to ask you about the hat. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our consumer care headwear division. You doing all right in there? Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. Can you see in there? I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the spacer's choice catalog. Which is available here at a reasonable price. How do you brush your teeth? Spacer's Choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat wash, mouthwash, and manta floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Sprat wash and manta floss. Sound like they contain some ingredients that you'd rather not have in your cleaning and mouths wash. Sounds weird. Do <laughs> you miss eating solid food? Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find none like them on all a groundbreaker. Or anywhere in the Halcyon colony. Do you have to sleep with that on? Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse Mix. That's two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig of two-hour energy brew. The blast will send you through the stratosphere and the crash will knock you out gold, guaranteed. Does Space's Choice make you wear that? Add an additional 10% to your purchase today and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. That's why we put Martin through six years of vendor school, only to make him wear this hat. Do you need me to help get you out of there? Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Now. Are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is spearmint. <laughs> Where can I get a hat like yours? You would never ask if you knew what it's like in here. I mean, why anyone can be a Spacer's Choice Consumer Relations Choice Specialist. Just keep your nose clean and aim for the moon. I'm addressing the man beneath the mask. Are you okay? I, uh, you know, damn it. No slogan for that one. Uh, look, this hat, my job, 
It may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. Sorry if I pushed you too hard, Martin. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we cut corners so you don't have to. What do you sell here? Anything and everything. Whatever you want. We got it. And when you need a replacement, we got that too. Must be shoddy quality if it needs replacing. Just the opposite. Spacer's Choice items are always new. Hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop buying new stuff. Oh, sorry. Got the line wrong. You want me to do it again? If you wouldn't mind. Spacer's Choice items are always new. Hot off the shelves, because customers just can't stop improving their lives with our fine products. You could go broke buying overpriced Aramid gear, or you could buy from us at a much more reasonable rate. These prices still seem steep to me. Well, this is just the beginning of a long, fruitful relationship. Who knows what discounts await the loyal customer. Okay. Uh, have a look. So, what do you sell? Oh, I can actually buy the Moon Man helmet. Lie plus five. Level seven. Okay, so those are just the same each time. The sell price is about 10%. <laughs> I could wear that helmet if I wanted to. Oh, and mods. Armoring increases body armor and helmet armor ratings. Oh, wait, I can... Right. Buy a lying moon hat for each companion and walk around like that. Yay, <laughs> the temptation is there, yes. I guess that's the idea. They probably give you six hats so you can put one on each companion if you want to. <laughs> Poor guy. Must be good at his job. Better than the last. Between you and me, though, he works twice as hard for himself as he does for the board. Prerogative of management. Still, there's a lot more corporate stuff in the bay these days. Missed the start of that conversation, sadly. So, let's see. Ooh, can we rent an upstairs room? <laughs> Interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Remember Auntie Cleo? Because she remembers you. When you were sick, who took your temperature? When you were hungry, who gave you a needle full of blood? Auntie Cleo, that's who. Have you given your auntie a hug today? This is Halcyon Noon, reminding you that there's no I in Noon, no We in Halcyon, and no Mercury in Fatu. So, uh, good that they reminded us that there's no Mercury in Saltuna.
Come in, my friends. Okay. Close the door. See if there's anything we need. Nanner spank. I guess that's just food. Ooh, pit cartridge. Ammo. Rest and go key card. We don't have that. We can pick this one. Toss ball card, Aldo Vicente. And. Okay. Where can we get a rest and go key card? Or the rest. He kind of looks like he belongs to this place. Say, can I pickpocket you? No. Let's talk to you. How do you do? And uh, welcome to the rest and go. We used to be the go and rest, but folks never knew when to leave. Sorry. Business has been slow. Anything to occupy the time. I'm looking for Gladys. Oh, you can't miss her. Right behind you, number two. First unit on the left, or second unit from the right, depending on which direction you count from. How's life on Groundbreaker? Fine, as long as the board keeps its grubby mitts to itself. Chief Tennyson holds the ship together, the promenade holds our economy together, and Sublight is the shoddy jewel in our rusty old crown. How does Groundbreaker keep the board at bay? Our Chief Tennyson has an independent streak, same as her mother and grandmother who rode this ship on the crossing. There's a reason the board's embassy is a glorified shoebox. While Junlei Tennyson lives and breathes, Groundbreaker remains free. You mentioned Sublight. Our local garbage collectors. That Lilia Hagen never met a debris field she didn't like. She freely admits she planted her roots in Groundbreaker to escape board oversight. But I think there's more to it. She's unusual in the head, that one. Do you do business with the promenade merchants? Of course. Most of our supplies come and go through merchants. Company ships and salvage runs are the only traffic we tend to get. I try and steer clear of that creepy fellow in the moon mask. If there's a cost to being a company man, he paid it in spades. Oh. I'll be on my way. Ah, so we have to go there. So what's the other one? Ooh. Mag picks. Lots of mag picks for free. And a pit cartridge. Um, yeah, and delicious, delicious garbage. Wait, did you just go in there? You have a name. Can I talk to you? Damnable thing about living on a space station. No pigeons to feed. Oh, you can feed the sprats, sure enough. But then the neighbors start moaning about hygiene. <laughs> okay, I guess we don't want to steal stuff, so... I mean, not, you know, like, right in front of people. Oh. Let's see what we can do up here before we continue. Hello. I'm here for an inspection. Guest terminal. Pay to view movies. Pay to view is restricted to diamond level guests, but feel free to peruse our catalog. Entertainment cartridges are available for rent at the main desk. There are currently zero cartridges in stock. My big canid friend. A lab-grown giant canid goes on an adorable rampage, leading a family of scientists on a wild chase across Emerald Vale. 
Spending the holiday away from home proves to be a chore, but the family soon realizes that true friends are the monsters you meet along the way. Rated FSR for fun time, simulated rampage, and body count 11. Nanner Spank 7, Primal Affections. Raised by wilderness primals, one man will leave the jungle he knows to explore the one he doesn't, Keystone. He came for Nanner's bank, but he stayed for love. Can a young corporate executive collar this creature, or will she awaken the beast within? Rated P-A-C-N as for passion, anthropoid, and consensual Nanner's banting. Aren't Nanner's banks, wasn't that like the bananas or the drink? Return to root. Pay to view cereals. Restricted to diamond levels, zero cartridges in stock. Baking with Edna. In this time-honored culinary classic, Chef Edna gives valuable life lessons while she cooks from the book of approved cakes. Learn to maintain a structured kitchen, obey your head chef, achieve a good sponge, and obey your sous chef. Edna is the boss in her kitchen. Now she can be the boss of yours. Um... Space Hospital. If the walls of Orbital Hospital could talk, they'd shriek with terror. Those doctors have seen it all. Zero-G cyst lancing. Extraterrestrial teratoma. Next, on a very special episode, in order to trap a chem thief, Dr. Margrave must become a serial arsonist. Don't forget to see Space Hospital nights for steamy suspense. Broderick's Brood. An ordinary colony family daydreams of the extraordinary. While Lucia works in the factory canning processed borst, her ham-handed husband cooks up schemes to land her a big promotion. Will that lovable fool ever learn to be satisfied with what he has? Broderick Brood is a testament to the less-is-success family lifestyle. Access guest messages. Ah, we can hack. From Veritas. Subject, be careful. To Iceman. One of you bees squealers came asking after you. Wanted to know what you like to drink, who you talk to, what your temperament's like. Tried to pay me off. I took the bits and told her a pack of lies. Watch your back when you get in. Don't want to find you in the waste disposal chute. V. I see. Been a while since I heard from you. You're on that long haul out to Dashkova right now. Hope it goes well. I got a space for you and yours to meet when you get back. It's just a storage room, but it's quiet and safer than the bar. Should be able to accommodate most of your folks. No fees or nothing. Just let me buy you a beer. Where is a PR? Subject, please stop. Mr. McRed. We have reviewed your proposal for the tenth time and still do not agree that Galactic Mushroom is an acceptable flavor for a Rizzo beverage. Even if we were to pursue the idea, the samples you sent us were dangerously hallucinogenic. The unopened package alone caused mayhem in our receiving bay. Please don't reach out to us again. Okay, so MacRed, he was mentioned before. Um... The screen just said error monarch. Three people sneaking at the same time are three times stealthier. Yes. Um, okay. Don't look funny at the crew. Heard they toss folks out the airlock if they don't like the face. I guess. Close that door again. Oh, more bypass shunts for free. That's nice. I guess we can't go up there. Oh, we can hack this, but we don't have to. Let's see, weapon parts, always good. All sorts of stuff. Oh, ammo always good. Hmm. 
nothing. So I guess we'll go and talk to Gladys then. Those are the sprats. Ooh, ooh. Secret passage. Ooh. Examine. S Squatter's journal. I served on two corporate freighters before I got stranded here. Everyone's heard my sub story, but no one's listening. To them, I'm just background radiation. Wasn't my fault the captain decided to take off early. Wasn't my fault no one checked the crew manifest. Wasn't my fault they replaced me with a full timer. Now I'm filthy, bitless, and badless. Far as anyone's concerned, I'm groundbreaker trash. That's how I live. And if no one agrees to take me on as crew, I suppose that's how I'll die. That doesn't sound too good. Hmm. What else is there? Bit cartridge, model spaceship. Don't know what that's good for, but uh, we shall see. Trespassers will be shot on sight and fined. Holographic disguise activated. Your holographic shroud is activated, giving you temporary access to this restricted area. Moving drains the shroud's energy. When it runs out, personnel will see and interrogate you. Talk your way out of the interrogation to reset your shroud. It will get harder to talk your way out the more you are interrogated. Okay. Um, anything here? Oh, what's this? Medical Bay keycard. Okay. We've unlocked the medical bay. That doesn't look too good. Hmm. I think I'll go back. Okay. Okay, but at least this is not a restricted area. But so now... So we came in via the operating room. Oh. Okay, so I guess... Going in here. You're sure this is perfectly safe? I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease. Myself. Yeah, I think I'll go back out. I don't really have any need to be in here. But it's good to know that we can do this. All right. Um All right, so finally talking to Gladys then. Oh, where does that lead? Oh, ye olde outhouses. Oh, 
we interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Do you have what it takes to defend your corporate township from the dangers of alien wildlife and the unemployed? Talk to your local manager about applying for military training and lend your life to protecting our wonderful brands and products. Military service does not guarantee full employment rights, tax breaks, military discounts, health benefits, military burials, participation medal, training, or weapons. This has been Halcyon News, your only source for news in the Halcyon Commons. Um, yes. So basically, if you sign up for military service, you might not even get a weapon. Well, I guess... Well, I guess we have that in the real military as well, right? There are jobs in the military that are not combat. So that should work. I'm not sure I should hack or steal right in front of her. Bless my heart. A stranger come knocking on a poor old woman's door. You here for a particular reason? Or did the neighbors tell you how good my sugar cookies are? Made without a single natural ingredient or an oven. Just like store bought. <laughs> Phineas sent me. You said you could sell me a nav key to Stellar Bay. Those have been the height of illegality since Stellar Bay turned their noses up at the board. You and I could be thrown to the void just for discussing such a transaction. Lucky for us, Groundbreakers are free port. We're outside of the board's control. For the time being, at least. Now, I only have the one nav key. And they're hard to come by these days. It won't be cheap. If you find yourself lacking in the bits, I might have an opportunity you'd be interested in. 10,000 bits. Yeah, I don't have that. Tell me about this. Uh, any chance of a discount since Phineas sent me? Phineas, that old kook. He was quite the dancer back in his prime, did he tell you? Real light on his feet. Real light in the wallet, too. He still owes me a small fortune. Lots. Maybe I should charge you double. Okay, <laughs> that didn't go too well. Tell me about this opportunity. Well, I find I'm in need of a ship captain with a little... moral flexibility. Might be this could help out the groundbreaker, as well as earn some bits. But if you've got qualms... Um... Well, let's see. No qualms here. Let's hear the details. Do you know Edna over in engineering? Sweet as a pea, that one. On occasion, she'll pass along transmissions I might find interesting. She sent me a recording of a distress signal she'd scraped from the Groundbreaker's comm array. Curious thing is, it came from an outpost called Roseway. And Auntie Cleo abandoned that place years ago. Oh, we wanted to go to Roseway. Why was Roseway abandoned? Can't say I know for sure. Maybe it never really was. Sounds like someone poking into somewhere they shouldn't be got into a spot of trouble. Comm centers don't operate themselves, Captain. Someone had to have sent that distress call manually. Those corps are cleverer than all get out. Might have been a ruse to keep the rest of the board from sniffing around. Say no more. I'm in. You've got an ear for intrigue and a nose for bits. I like that. Here's a copy of the SOS recording, complete with the coordinates. If you should find a secret worth selling, might be I could find a buyer. Corporate bigwigs will pay top bit for inside information on their competitors. The more we got the corpse fighting each other, the less time they got to meddle in our... Abandoned affairs. outpost, corporate secrets, got it. Don't forget to come find old Gladys when you're done. What other jobs do you know about? Might want to acquaint yourself with Junlei Tennyson, Groundbreaker's chief. She's been trying to get a handle on this heat problem we've got. You'll find her fretting in engineering. 
I'd say she's a sweet girl, but law forfend someone call me a liar. Uh, I wanted to ask you something else. What do you want then? My hard-earned wisdom. You mentioned groundbreakers outside of the board's control. That's right, dearie. The only independent station in the colony. That's us. Though for how long, I can't say. That all depends on Miss G. How do you mean? The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, looking for ways to bring us to heel. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, ma'am. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. Back to my other questions. Go right ahead, sweetheart. What's this about the heat? Groundbreaker's radiators. Been neither fine nor dandy for weeks now. Miss Junley's supposed to be getting them fixed, but the board's determined to get in her way. How do you mean? The board can't abide a community that won't bend to its will. They've always got one scheme or another running, um, looking for ways to bring us We to did heat. that one already. Like this heat business. Shameful. But it won't work. No, ma'am. Groundbreaker's free till the day she dies, law willing. Might the board recall Stella Bay Nafkis? Ask the common folk, and they'll tell you it's on account of all the monsters on Monarch desperate to gobble you up. Because that's what the board tells them, you see. I think they made some fool mistake that would make them look bad to the rest of the colony, and they're trying to hide the evidence. What makes you think that? Those board folk are real prideful-like. Never want you looking behind the curtain, lest you see their derrieres. But old Gladys knows the score. The whole colony is not much more than a diorama, showcasing one board screw-up after another. That's why we gotta keep them from getting their grubby mitts on Groundbreaker. She's our mess. Are there still people down there? Probably. Every once in a while, we get these snippets of radio chatter. Edna shows them to me. Some man hooting and hollering about the light in us all. Claims he's transmitting from Monarch. But who knows if that's true. Might be true. Might be some new trick from the board. What did you do here? Oh, a little of this, a little of that. I buy and sell items that require discretion to dispose of. Knickknacks. Curios. I also knit throw pillows stuffed with the hair of famous tossball players. But that's more of a passion project. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. That's half the reason I make them. <laughs> That's not what you wanted to talk about, is it, dear? Thanks for your time. Any time, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Here, take a candy with you. Okay. I guess we got free candy. Candy from a stranger. Okay, so we haven't been able to buy a nav key. What? What did he just say? Captain Picard? <laughs> oh well. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Reports from concerned supervisors indicate that rates of time theft are on the rise. We urge all of our listeners to remember that lack of productivity is not a victimless crime. Workers should be on the lookout for slacking and underperformance. Report anyone you suspect of time theft to your supervisor immediately. This story brought to you by Halcyon News. All the news that's fit to broadcast. Alright, so I guess... We can... Uh... So, did we get a new missile? Message now weapons from distress signal.
Oh, that's on Terra 2 Roseway. Okay, so we can go back there. Then I guess that's what we'll do now. Hopefully... Oh, right, we cannot take our ship right now, can we? Can we? Let's try. Let's see what happens when we try. Oh. They pulled the plank, I guess. Hey there, you mind stepping back? This charming little ship's been impounded and I'm afraid I can't let you near it till it's not. Does it seem hot in here to you? I ain't felt so much as a tepid breeze in weeks. I hope Miss Chief Kennison gets that fixed soon. Well, it doesn't smell as bad here as Edgewater's graveyard in high summer, so guess I can't complain. Either way, let's not stick around so long. We all roast alive. No offense, Miss Elson. I'm sure whatever critical problem needs fixing will get patched in time. I'm starting to feel like a sisty roast in all this armor. Can you help me get this cleared up? I'd surely love to, but that's just not my bailiwick. You'll want to have words with our representative here from the board, Mr. Udom Bedford. His office is on the promenade. Gosh, I wouldn't dream of it. Not unless I got to, and I don't see any reason why I'd gotta. Do you? She's a good ship, ma'am. Mostly doesn't act up at all. Happy to hear it. I'm off. Have yourself a pleasant day. Okay, I forgot to read uh, Don't You Touch My Ship. But, okay, so I guess we have to talk to Bedford. Do do do. Music. Purple berry punch. You want a punch? We've got your punch right here. Alright, so. Where was it? Weapons, uh, passage to anywhere, I guess. Yeah. It's back there somewhere. Go back to Byzantium, you gold-plated bastard. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Disperse now, or I'll detain you for trespassing. Oh, real scary. You're really gonna arrest us on our station? Yeah, this is Chief June Lee's ship. You don't own shit here. Step back. I'm required by board bylaws to use excessive force. The Mardettes would space you for trying, you... you waste of O2 scrubbers. Yeah, O2 scrubbers. Look, just get out of here before I tell your captain what you've been getting up to on the clock. Ah, whatever. We got a date at the Lost Hope anyway. Is that really what you wanted to give me for life, Marcy? Guarding stairs to that rocky mustache food on fucking Bedford? I gotta get off this detail. <laughs> okay. I had a thought, but it disappeared. I'm just gonna hang in the back and try not to touch anything. You think the board and its agents would be more content sitting at the top of the system's food chain as they are? Finals are scheduled to air soon, but a scandal has rocked the league and thrown this pivotal game into question. Both teams have tested negative for performance-enhancing stims. A toss. <laughs> and referees are debating how and if this behavior could lead to an unfair advantage. You've been listening to Halcyon News, your mandated duty as a good citizen of Halcyon. Ah, yes. Wheeler messaged me you were coming. He must be the captain of the Unreliable, a vessel that used to be helmed by one Alex Hawthorne. And you are not he. Has... Something happened to my favorite scruffy freelancer? Oh, we could turn in wells here. Oh, 
Alex is dead. Oh no, this is terrible. My dear friend, what devilry is this? In whose miserable fever dream am I trapped? Uh, overacting much? Well, I guess, you know, be, be nice, be polite. I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, Alex. There were so many arguments we'd yet to have. What was your relationship with him? He was my dearest friend. My only friend. Right. You have his ship, you must know. That picture of us on the promenade, me hugging him, him wincing. I keep a copy beside my bed. Did he? It's a bit stalker. I really wouldn't know. It must have been lost with Alex then. One more tragedy to top the pile. Tell me, how did he die? Trust me, you don't want to know the details. You're quite right, of course. Best not to pry into such dismal things. So, about my ship. Fine. You're free to go. I've removed the impound order on your ship. But before you go, I did have one request. Alex promised to tell me the location of Phineas Wells. I'm sure you've seen his wanted posters all over the colony. Did Alex tell you where Wells might be? Anything at all? Alex never mentioned Phineas Wells. I think just pretend I don't know anything. That's... Uh, well, that's just terrible news. Oh, what am I going to do now? The board will have my head. Oh, I'm sorry. This is terribly unprofessional of me. Is there anything else I might help you with? What's this about the board having your head? It's personal business, I'm afraid. Uh, miserably, terribly personal. Uh, let's be polite and see if he tells us anything. Is there anything I can do to help? Information on the whereabouts of Phineas Wells would go a long way. It's... well, it's my white whale, I suppose. Yeah, I can't tell you that. It's fine. Really, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Now, if you've nothing else, please see yourself out. I'd like to drown myself in work. I wanted to ask you something else. Be my guest. What do you do here, exactly? I'm the certified representative of the board's interests here on the Groundbreaker. I'm their eyes, ears, and busy little hands. Big fish in a small space station. Nice setup. I have few complaints. Does it seem hot in here to you? Ugh. Loha, but it's miserable. My underarms are damp. How can I be expected to work in these conditions? Chief Tennyson is supposedly looking into the cause, but I've seen no action from her. Deplorable conduct. My superiors will be hearing about it. You can be certain of that. Why are there armed guards in here? Oh, you've noticed my friends. Wonderful. Aren't their guns very large? Tremendously impressive. They're here to keep the peace, of course. To watch your back, you mean? Precisely. Groundbreaker makes much ado about its independent status and so resents any board presence, no matter how benign. Uh, do you call keeping officers on their promenade benign? When the alternative is board guards at their gates, yes, I do. They don't see it that way, of course, but I can't say I much care. So I don't want to talk with him about Stellar Bay. That's something he shouldn't know anything about. Told you, groupie. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's a little weird. <laughs> what are those locked doors in the back? A luxury stateroom, reserved for Chairman Rockwell's use. Does the Chairman visit here often? Oh, good law, of course not. He'd never set foot on this decrepit junk pile. 
As this office is the primary embassy for the board on Groundbreaker, corporate bylaws specifically state a room must be maintained for the chairman's exclusive use. Okay. Ask away. Uh, I guess that's it. What if I want to go in the state room? But they'll shoot me if I try. But that's a nicely absurd, you know, detail that they say, well, of course this, I mean, it's also a technical thing, I guess, you know, they don't have to model as much if they just say, hey, there is a big state room behind this, but uh, you'll, you'll not, you know, you don't get into it. And uh, they just, uh, but on the other hand, it's like, yeah, they have a room, like he has not much space here, but of course there's an extra room reserved for the big boss. So instead of making the office more efficient, they have to be representative. Have you seen this man? For more offers for information leading to the capture of noted terrorist Phineas Wells, report any sightings to your local board embassy. Okay, and what is here? Um, it's, uh, we're two hours into the stream, so I think what I'll do is I'll take a quick break, and then we'll continue right here. I mean, now we have our ship back, I guess. But I guess we should uh, visit Miss Tennyson for our other objective. So uh, see you in a bit.